Good day and good afternoon fellow painters. I know that I wanted to post today something from the uh, Warhammer 40k world, uh, but uh, due to some technical uh, circumstances uh, this will not happen today. I have postponed it uh, until uh, further noticed uh, due to some uh, technical reasons, uh, but I will do it sooner or later, uh, so stay tuned to it. Today I have for you something very special, uh, the Assassin Redman from One Page Rules. Uh, my personal opinion, he looks way better than the um, guys from uh, Games Workshop. So uh, grab your paint, brushes and let's kick off. <clears throat> so after I primed uh, and uh, highlighted my miniature. I will use the first layer, and this one would be um, Creed Camo from Citadel. Uh, I will start painting from the inside to uh, the outside. So in this, in the first place, is a tunic that is hiding under his armor. <coughs> So I do prefer to do this step with the airbrush, but you can do it with uh, the regular normal brush. You will have uh, the same effect. So this is fine, uh, let uh, this um, couple of minutes to dry and we will take on the next part. So if you do want to highlight uh, with the contrast paints, I would advise this for the next highlight of white um, to prepare the spots that you want to highlight. So on, on the most raised areas with a little pre-shade and um, Due to it, you will have a nice clean highlight, more vibrant. And I will do it now for all the spots that I want to highlight. It's like pre painting, preparing for the OSL. Uh, I have mixed Creed Camo and Yellow from Vallejo and the pre-highlighted points of, of the Mini will highlight the areas. will highlight my this will hi um, blend my colors nice and evenly together I want to deal now with uh, his trousers And uh, if you're not quite sure if you will repaint uh, repaint uh, the previous color or not, so you can use always this uh, 
greatest tool of all for airbrushes is uh, masking putty from Green Stuff World. I love this stuff. Uh, so I used for the trousers uh, the Space Wolf Grey. You can of course do it with uh, some grayish colors, but I wanted to have some grayish tones and some bluish tones. This will fit perfect <clears throat> because of the greenish overall look of the guy. Uh, leave the first layer to dry Take a look if uh, the cut the color is strong enough for you and decide if you need one more So this is uh, the in-between step uh, For the next one I will take care of his leather parts uh, in <coughs> inside the miniature so I took uh, agarodunes and I will paint it straight from the pot So um, this is a little too bright uh, for, in my opinion, um, I will probably paint a second layer of it, but for now uh, I will uh, leave it for a couple of minutes to fully dry and will um, take on with the second layer. Okay, um, I will paint uh, his cape. That's why I covered uh, the whole miniature with um, plastic putty. I will start with uh, the back of the cape. Uh, in, the, in the most raised areas where the most light hits. I will reduce the amount of uh, contrast paint. I will. I want to keep it not so dark, but in general, the cape will be uh, much darker than his clothes. I want that the color variety happen. So work out how much color you are applying. I am focusing on the deepest uh, recesses and this at the start and will build up my color on and on.
I will cover the most raised areas with a filter of this color. I want this to be really much much lighter than the previous color. You can additionally leave some black, uh, some white spots. At this point where you paint, the most focus that you should apply is on the color transitions. Okay, I'm more or less happy with the, with the result. I will leave this to dry for now and uh, I'll be back with the uh, mid step. Back at our, uh, at our cape, I took uh, Caribbean turquoise. And with this color, um, I will build up the, the deepest shadows in the recesses. At the top bottom, I will apply it much more than in the upper areas. This will give me also an interesting touch. It will not be so boring. So take your time and with very short triggers, Apply your turquoise. If it comes in the upper area, I will do something similar, but a little lighter. I want to accent only the shadow areas. And want this to be I catch it. <sighs> this is fine. Let this dry and uh, we will take on with the next step in a couple of seconds. So um, this one we, I have uh, already did a couple of times. Uh, the non-metallic metal in this case. Um, I'm and therefore I mixed some black and cold grey together in a 50-50 consistency and I uh, painted all the metal parts that uh, I wanted to. Um, this process uh, shouldn't be so accurate, you can do a um, couple of mistakes, it's even better uh, because this caven uh, do not wear uh, shiny Polish metals. So uh, take your time, make some mistakes and have fun. In the second step of the non-metallic metal I used the uh, cold grey uh, to highlight um, some of the areas of his uh, metal parts. Um, here for make some mistakes uh, you can uh, even uh, paint it with some stippling. Uh, this uh, do not has to be 100% accurate. It uh, simply needs to look uh, quite accurate and good. So uh, final highlight of the non-metallic metal part is uh, of course white. Uh, I thinned it down uh, heavily uh, to receive a good consistency to blend um, the color with the uh, rest of the um, paints that I have used. Um, 
For this now remember to paint all the sharp edges uh, with the white color to represent the sharpness of the edges. This will look uh, stunning and uh, perfect. It comes um, to his um, skin parts. Uh, I did paint um, some skin the last time on a dwarf, so this process should be very similar. Uh, for the main color, I did use uh, the German red brown prime color from uh, Vallejo. And uh, for the first uh, highlight of the skin, I used some. Uh, rose brown color I heavily uh, thinned it down to receive a good consistency and a good highlight the next highlight of the skin is pink flesh from Vallejo uh, reduce uh, the highlighted uh, area and uh, watch out for, for the color transitions After pale flesh, uh, this is the overall look of this caven. Uh, I will now paint his fur, and therefore I will take snake back leather and will start with the first pieces. With I do not want um, the fur to be very very dark, I will uh, later on paint some hair strings of the fur, but the general color I can do with the airbrush. So um, this is the look after I applied the fur. <clears throat> okay, I will I will fix some gaps here and there, and we'll take on with uh, the next details. Okay, let's um, finish the fur. Um, therefore, I mixed snake bite leather with some white. And with this mix, I will paint some hair strings.
Okay, uh, it is time to finish some details on the tunic. So, uh, at the very bottom of uh, his shirt there is uh, a trim. So, uh, for this <coughs> I will start with gold red. Um, okay. So there is a second trim on on the hood. Uh, so the trim of the on the hood. When you follow the line, you will see that. Uh, there is uh, additional trim on his um, cape on the back so I will paint this trim uh, with gold red and additional to it um, the uh, third trim is on his second cape that I want also uh, to paint with gold red so take your time uh, apply the first layer and uh, we will see each other in a couple of seconds Bloody red is my next highlight <clears throat> and with this color I will highlight all the uh, red trims white and bloody red are my next two colors for the highlight and in this case I will reduce the area yep. And uh, this is the result after I highlighted uh, the trim. Uh, the rest of the trims I will highlight uh, with the regular brush. If you are able to cover the places to do um, for the airbrush, do it with the airbrush. Uh, yes, so finish the trims and we'll show you the next step. So it's, it is time to finish it with uh, some rust grey. I will start to paint some fabrics on uh, the trousers. In case of a skaven, uh, the details don't need to be ideal I mean they are wearing the things that they found in the dumpster so My goal is simply to underline some of the edges. And paint some fabrics. For this one, stippling is, I think, ideal. It 
will give you some nice random pattern. So for the most uh, uh, raised areas on the trousers, Phenrisian Grey. I think that's uh, fine enough. Let's take on a, uh, let's mo let's move on to the cloak for the uh, edge highlight and some dirt on the cloak. Uh, I will use the green. I will repaint only some of the edges. Lime green. Will uh, give us interesting edge highlights on the tunic. Be careful with this color. Is this really intense? Stipple a couple of dots. I hope you have uh, enjoyed this one. Um, next week um, will happen the second and also the last part of the Redman Assassin. Um, I will show you how I painted his um, weapons, uh, the glowing effect of the weapons. So stay uh, tuned um, for it. Uh, if you enjoyed this one, please um, comment down below, uh, like the recording, uh, subscribe to the channel. Um, till now, I uh, wish you a great week uh, and till next time. Bye bye!